We'll be reading Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. which says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So we're to seek the Lord while he may be found because there is a time when he won't be found. God doesn't go into hiding. But there is a time when he won't be near. While he's near, the wicked need to forsake their ways and the unrighteous man their thoughts. We know that to be wicked is to be unrighteous. The ways that need to be uh, forsaken. are the practices, the way that you walk, your behaviour, and the thoughts that need to be forsaken by the wicked are their beliefs, their faith, their profession. If we read on, God tells us in verse 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. We do not think the way God thinks. We do not behave the way God behaves. So how does God set about to help us with that? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's thoughts, his beliefs, God's ways, his practices are very high. How can we possibly attain to them? He sends us rain. He sends us doctrines, messages, faith, prophecies. It is in the drinking of these messages that will develop our practice, that will change our behaviour.
God is doing this for a purpose. He says, as the earth maketh, uh, as the, uh, it watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, So the bringing forth and the budding are in this early rain time period. The seed, the fruit, the grain, the practice. Will develop under this rain. But what is the ultimate purpose of this fruit or grain? To give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. We don't have visibility of that on this line. We see the ripening of the fruit. We see its harvest. But we've got to get off that line before we see that grain made into bread or re-sown. It can be easy back here to lose sight of the heavenly purpose God has for us. But it's very real and it's not that long away, not that far off. We do have to focus on being ready for Sunday law. The summer is ended and we are not saved. We don't want that divine announcement. So we focus on the crisis that is just ahead of us. But we shouldn't lose sight of the great purpose that God has in store. These messages are designed to lift our thoughts and our behavior to a very high standard. We are finally learning what it is to be Christ-like. We thought we did when we were conservative. But God says, my ways and my thoughts aren't like yours. So here's some rain. And soak it in and let it develop. So let's go back to our Eden to Eden line of restoration. And thank you for the correction. We looked at Genesis chapter 11. And we saw that in the story of the Tower of Babel, there is the development of culture before there is any structured religion culture has developed before false religions we don't have a bail yet 
Baal, 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 uh, Mithra, Marduk, Roman and Greek gods are thousands of years away. But what we have is self-exaltation, the worship of uh, uh, human idolatry, and the development of different cultures that are going to have the, these curses as their backbone. Right? Globally, right across the world. The very next thing that will happen is Genesis chapter 12. And that's the call of Abram. Get thee out of thy country and thy kindred and thy father's house. Come out of Babylon, the, the real estate, the ground, the land. Leave your family, your kindred. And leave your father's house. Father's house is a rather complex term. We would say patrimony. Patrimony. What your ancestors would hold sacred. your family heritage, your culture. Leave your land, leave Babylon, literally, leave your family, leave your culture. And in Abraham, we're going to start to see the seeds of restoration. Everybody knows that all Abraham needs to create the God's kingdom is his sperm. And God says, your thoughts aren't my thoughts. Your ways aren't my ways, they're Babylonian ways. You need Sarah as well. Abram's sperm, Sarah's egg. And the seeds of restoration are sown. We look back and it's a very poor, a very little start. But it's, uh, I, I don't know if we fully realize how dark and bad it was back then. It's going to take thousands of years for that to, uh, for us to get to where we are today. Okay, so we see that cultures spread across the world. I'll just rub this out. Let's bring it down to our day. And the Vespers program that began this year
have brought these issues into our current context. When we looked at the political ideological spectrum, the political left and the political right. So short review. This is a Uh, uh, this is a concept that developed in the French Revolution. The common people that were standing up against the corrupt church and the corrupt state came together to discuss how they were going to make life better for themselves. Amongst all those people were some who were quite happy to keep the, the king and the church. They said, we can fix what's already here. They're called reactionaries. We don't want much change. We want things to get better, but not. Um, we don't want to overturn the overturn the system that exists. Those people that wanted to keep the status quo stood on the right side of the moderator. Those that stood on the left wanted revolution. A complete overturning of the current situation. These were radicals, extreme change. Radical is a very uh, well-used word across many professions. Seeing we use the agricultural method a lot, let's look at agriculture. When the seed is germinated, the very first development is called a radical root. The word radical means root. That radical root is going to anchor the plant to the ground. Sometimes that radical root turns into a taproot, like a carrot. And sometimes it just develops other roots off the radical. But radical is. Um, it means root. So in medical terms, if you consider a radical mastectomy, if a woman or a man has breast cancer, a radical mastectomy is when they not only take the breast,
but they will take the lymph tissue and a muscle tissue that connects the breast to the rib cage. They take everything because they want to root out that disease. which is what the revolutionaries wanted to do back in the late 1700s. Root out the disease of a corrupt king and a corrupt church. But radical hysterectomies, same thing. They take everything. So when you're radical, you have to recognise the problem. And understand that the only solution is to completely remove that problem. When you weed the ground, you pull the whole root up. So the question was asked during the Vespers program. In 2018, this movement prior to the Midnight Cry was found on the right side of the political spectrum. There were four main prophecies that changed our worldview. An understanding of the moral majority and the 10 years leading up to 1989. An understanding of the line of the Nethanims and the structure of our lines. Uh, the understanding of Pyrrhus and the relationship between the king of the north and the king of the south. And an understanding of 2016 and the Battle of Ipsus. And the... the uh, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Those prophecies changed our worldview. Forced us to move from the right to the left. My question is, why were we on the right anyway? There are many factors. Not only did we have a wrong worldview, but we were very good conservative Seventh day Adventists. What makes a good Advent, Seventh Day Adventist. We'll write a list. We keep the Sabbath. We pay tithe. We're health reformers. We're dress reformers. We're very careful how we spend our spare time. And also where we live. 
country living. When we changed our worldview and realized our politics were shifting us to the left, that we were taking on liberal and progressive understandings of politics. There were those who said, we don't need these anymore. They belong on the conservative side of the spectrum. And we're not bound by them anymore. These are our standards. And what we needed to do was bring them over to the left with us. We needed to see them as God see that sees them and practice them as he would have us practice them. Which means we need to look at them through the prophetic lenses of radical feminism. So let's consider the Sabbath. No longer on the seventh day is the pulpit the dominion of a man. Two thousand and eighteen gave women a voice. Teaching and preaching with the full uh authority of the leadership so sabbath worship equality but even the rest of the day should uh, equality should be demonstrated The days of women running to the kitchen on their own after worship. And the men having their private important business outside. Those days are over. Full, full equality for 24 hours. And so we bring Sabbath over to the left. And we now know, sorry. And now we keep the Sabbath holy. As God sees it. Tithe pain. 10% of our income in support of the ministry. Plus offerings. We know that the uh, movement needs financial support. Support the movement financially and what happens? God opens the windows of heaven and rain comes. Got to support the ministers that are giving the rain. Question is who holds the purse strings?
regardless of who is the chief breadwinner, there is to be equality seen in the handling of finances. This movement goes further than that and demands that women should have their own financial security. Their own savings, their own bank account. Equality is to be demonstrated in finances. inside and outside of the movement. Health reform. What is the principle behind health reform? It is that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Don't profane them, don't defile them. When we put on our prophetic glasses, we now recognize that other people's bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. And they should have autonomy over their bodies. It's their temple. And so in a marriage relationship, a woman has full authority to deny access to her temple. Don't touch unless invited. No means no. So we respect each other's temple. Dress reform. My bottom in a pair of pants. Is no more sexual than a man's bottom in a pair of pants. Bottoms are bottoms. And if I can't wear tight, revealing clothes, then a man can't wear tight, revealing clothes. Our standards still apply. but we are no longer constrained by social norms. Either slaves to worldly fashions or slaves to conservative fashion. Amusements. With our prophetic glasses on, we look for things such as sexism and misogyny. Whether it's music or uh, movies, but uh, as 2014 brings out, gaming is one of the most sexist forms of amusement that is being uh, played today. So between gaming and pornography, the exploitation of women's bodies we get an insight into what God really hates.
when we were over here on the right, we thought we knew why God hated certain amusements. certain dress codes and, and health practices. But we were wrong in what we saw as bad about them. And God has sent us rain to correct our thinking. Country living, taking your wife to a remote area, remote area where there's no opportunity for career uh, or, or job or education. There's nothing innately evil about living in the country. But when you deprive a woman of those human rights, the right to work, the right to education, then country living becomes an activity of the wicked or unrighteous. So we move over to the left. We take all of these uh, standards with us. But now we keep them for the right reasons. We hate what God hates and we love what God loves. We have to be radical feminists and root the patriarchy out of these standards. Every tiny little root. So when we were over here on the right, and we had the wrong views of these standards, where did that come from? It didn't come from our religion. Before there was organized religion, there was culture. And at the back of all our conservative practices, was culture, not religion. Okay, so we bring these standards to the right. To the left. Thank you. Second typo. And and Oh, and when we do that, there is now no striking contradiction between our faith and our practice. The seal of God can only be placed on somebody who is, whose practice is in line with radical feminism. There are probably other things we could list here. But, the, but these are fundamental standards. If our practice is of a conservative patriarchal 
mindset. That is the result of hanging on to our culture. And we'll end with receiving the mark of the beast. We cannot say we have received the midnight cry message and not demonstrated it in our behaviour. So it's culture that has impacted our standards, not our religion. Okay. So if we come back to this line, and we return to the United States, we we started by looking at how it was going to give homage to the papacy. by not breaking those horns, but through its legislative and judicial powers, practice something that was in contradiction to its profession. And when we took, made application to that personally, We, can, we, we saw that we can give homage to the papacy the exact same way. So let's just look at our fractal. And we add our dates, 1989, 9-11. So the line of the priests is finished. 2021 is a waymark of the second advent. What happens at the second advent? If we go down and look at the real second advent, And we read passages like Matthew 24, where Christ takes us chronologically, a, a chronological walk through history and prophecy. He takes us right down to the second advent. And he gives the illustration of two women in a field. They're in the same field. One is taken. And that means taken to himself. So he's taken that person. The other is left or left aside. The idea is of rejection. Then he repeats it, two women at a grinding mill. One is taken, one is left. Here we are, the second advent last year, 2021. And we see that that is, in a spiritual sense, what has been happening. Two people in the same field, in the same Zoom room. One taken, one left. 
no longer do you have to physically leave the movement. You can give lie to your profession and still stay in the movement. I think one of the, I, I think, uh, that one of the dangerous things that has been told people in the movement is just stick with the ship. There is no other movement. This is all there is. Just stick with it. And it gives the impression that all you have to do is hang around. Tend the meetings. Take part in the roster. Just hang around and you'll be safe. but your faith has to be practiced. It has to be demonstrated. There is no assurance in salvation in just hanging around. And I know those that shared those thoughts didn't mean any harm. But it, uh, it's something that we really need to consider. So we're radical feminists, which means the personal... is political. And we're also students of prophecies, which means the political is what? Prophetic. what our lines are about, what's political is prophetic, external events. If A equals B, if A equals B, and B equals C, then what do we do? Then A equals C. And the personal is prophetic. And we know that. That's been taught in this movement for a long time. That we are not only the seed, the blade and the with the plant, but we are also the servants. The servants are prophetic. Sorry, my bad. The servants are are observing external events, are, ex are observing the way marks. But as the plant, we are also fulfilling prophecy. When we put our faith into practice, 
when our radical feminism is observed and demonstrated. There is no more powerful expression of the truth. And it is what is required to receive the seal of God. It is the striking contradiction that receives the mark of the beast. So second advent. Here we are. And we have time to bring our practice into line with our faith. We have time. We, we, we have to juggle two things. One is we haven't got much time. Sunday law is coming up quickly. The other is we do have time to review, review, review. All the presentations, 2019, 2020, 2021, and the Vespers of this year need to be thoroughly chewed and masticated and absorbed and digested. To create a radical feminist. This rain is going to become a part of the DNA of that plant. What farmer goes out to his field and says, I think I'll take that rain back out of the plant. When it's been soaked up by the roots and absorbed by the foliage. It's impossible to take it out. And it will develop fruit. And it will have the seal, which means it's um, uh, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> it's um. The comprehension and the glad reception of the message. The eating of the little book to the Millerites is also the drinking in of these messages to us. They all connect back to those books of Daniel and Revelation. So on that note, that's where we'll finish. We want to be the woman that is taken here, not the woman that is left. And that will depend on whether our practice is in line with our faith. So let's pray. Our loving God in heaven, we are excited to be living in these days. The, priv the great privilege of our calling and yet we are also embarrassed but we have not thought the way you have thought or behaved the way you would have us to. But 
The light of the midnight cry has opened our eyes. Enable us to keep drinking in this rain. We will not be satisfied until we awake with your image. So we continue to ask for your long suffering and mercy. And pray that we would also have that towards others. These cultural roots run very deep in us. But may we take every correction as it comes. We leave ourselves in your care and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.